Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 8, Episode 8, Petty Mess. So this episode opens at Dorit's house and PK is thanking her for his surprise party the night before. Oh baby, you're so great. You're a machine, baby. And he talks about how much he loved that she sang Fever with Boy George. And then he said, you know, George likes to sing with people who aren't very good. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, thanks a lot, PK. And he said, well, it's true. It makes him look better. And I don't know if he's teasing her, or if that's a real thing that boy George likes to do or what. But anyway, it was kind of funny. Oh, but not as funny as the scene that comes next. Okay, so this next scene is probably right up there with like my top five best scenes ever. It is just deliciously delightful. Dorit says to PK, Oh, I have one more gift for you. It's from the children. Now, mind you, the children are nowhere to be seen. I know in my house, when my daughter was so young that she couldn't buy her own gifts for daddy, and I was the one who bought them, at least I would have her hand it to him and say, this is from me, daddy. I mean, that just sums up Dorit in a nutshell. I feel like Dorit has partial custody of her children. Dorit and PK get them like every other weekend and holidays. Anyway, so she hands him this gift and he opens it. It's a figurine of Dorit and the children. This answers the question of what to do when a trip to your local family portrait studio isn't good enough. Have a figurine made in your likeness. It was weird. It was weird. And PK's like, oh, well, thank you, honey. I mean, he didn't even know what to say at first. Then he says, you look like Barbara Streisand, which I don't know if he meant that as a compliment or not. Barbara Streisand's beautiful, but she's also quite a bit older than Dorit, and she's not more beautiful than Dorit. And like, I don't know if it was meant to be a compliment or if it was just an observation on his part, because then he says, oh, look at Phoenix. She looks like a ghost. She, she looks like a ghost baby from a horror movie. <laughs> and he's right. Oh my God. This thing was just weird. It really was. I mean, couldn't she have gotten him a beautiful framed picture? I don't know. And why does she have to be in it? That's the gift from the children. Why does Dorit have to be in there front and center? She's just so weird. Anyway, that's not even the best part of this scene. The best part is that he says, oh, it's great. Thank you, babe. Thanks, babe. And he puts it down and then he picks up the bag and, <laughs> and, he, and he knocks it over. And he knocks it over and Phoenix's head comes off. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, and that was probably really expensive. And then I was just watching Watch What Happens Live and Andy Cohen said it was $1,500. Oh, but you know what? It was worth every minute of that scene. <laughs> of that scene. It was so funny. Next, we are back at Vanderpump Dogs, which I, is getting more airplay this year than ever before. And, you know, is it really a dog rescue place? Because every dog in, in there is an adorable, like, brand new puppy. It doesn't look like any other rescue shelter I've ever seen. So, no wonder she's not having trouble placing these dogs. She only takes the prettiest ones, it seems. So Lisa's manager comes downstairs and he says, I have two things to tell you. First, and he sets down this duffel bag and unzips it and like a mountain of puppies come swimming out of it. And one is just cuter than the next and Lisa squeals with delight. And to the confession cam, Lisa says, oh, 
a bag full of fresh puppies. What could be better than that? Uh, okay, Cruella. Maybe a hundred and one of them? Now I'm starting to question that faux fur she had at PK's party. The second thing he has to tell Lisa is that an email came in that morning saying that the lawsuit against them has been dropped. So she's thrilled and she's telling Ken, yeah, I'm going out to dinner with Dorit and Kyle so I can tell them all about it at dinner. That's a little foreshadowing there. There's a couple throwaway scenes. Kyle and Teddy go shopping. That's followed by Erica and Rinna meeting for lunch. Nothing important really happens at either of those scenes. Then we have the dinner that Lisa and Dorit and Kyle are going to. And Kyle and Dorit are over a half hour late. No joke, we're doing the time clock thing again. Vanderpump is there, believe it or not, on time. Dorit calls and is complaining about traffic again. And she said, um, just get here because you live right near me and I managed to get here on time. So Dorit and Kyle actually end up showing up at the same time and they all sit down. Lisa tells them her good news about the lawsuit being dropped. Both of the women responded, oh, that's great news. They toasted to the good news. And then Kyle made a comment about how it's great not to have that negativity in your life anymore. And then she segues into saying, speaking of negativity, and then she brings up PK's party and how Dorit asked her, are you Teddy's mouthpiece? And that hurt Kyle's feelings because Kyle said, um, you didn't say that to Vanderpump who also butted into that conversation. And anyway, this was the weirdest dinner ever because then Kyle gets really emotional. She starts crying. I don't, I can't, I don't even know what she said. Something like, I feel like you two are ganging up on me, or I can't remember, setting me up. I don't remember what she said, but Dorit came over and said, no, I would never do that. And like she came and sat right by her. And Lisa says, okay, that's it. And she gets up and walks out. The two of them are shocked. And Dorit said, why are you mad now? And she goes, because I am. And she walks out. The two of them go after her out on the street. They're like, what's wrong? Why are you leaving? And she gets in her car and says, I'm going home to my husband who would rather spend time with me than either of you. It's funny. There's this shot where both of them look like, <laughs> what? The two of them go back into the restaurant and now they're discussing Lisa Vanderpump and how she needs the attention on her all the time and she's jealous of their friendship or maybe she was jealous that Dorit went over to comfort Kyle. They're not exactly sure. But in the process of that conversation, Dorit ends up telling Kyle a bunch of stuff about Vanderpump's childhood that Kyle never knew about. Now Kyle's feeling weird and kind of pissed off. There's this kind of funny moment when Kyle is saying how she's hurt by the fact that Lisa hasn't shared that information with her because she's known her so long and Dory completely misunderstands. Kyle says, you know, I tell her all kinds of personal stuff about my family and the fact that she's not being open and honest back to me is really upsetting. And Dory says, oh, I totally get it. She has a whole jewelry line and she didn't tell me that I was going to like a full on photo shoot for it. <laughs> That's not what Kyle meant. But then Kyle says, uh, I didn't even know she had a jewelry line. So yeah, there's another thing that Vanderpump has not shared with Kyle. It is weird though, right? Cause I, those two are good friends. Why wouldn't she tell her she had a jewelry line? That seems weird. Next scene is Lisa Rinna and her daughters. They're at home and talking. Guess where they are at home? In the kitchen. Guess where in the kitchen? At the booth. <laughs> yes. It was just about how the 16 year old doesn't want to get her driver's license and she's saying how she just wants to be a little kid for a little longer because she's already homeschooled and she's been all around the world with the fashion thing and 
I don't know. In one way, I kind of understand her point of view. And in the other, I was distracted by the fact that I believe I heard that they got her a Tesla, which is kind of my husband's dream car. Kills me. Then we see Lisa Rinna showing up on the set of Days of Our Lives, which is a soap opera she has done like 25 years ago. And she's coming back to reprise her role for, I think, four days or something like that. That was actually just a throwaway scene too. Now the ladies are heading to Teddy's beach house in Dana Point. And we cut back and forth between Kyle and Dorit, who are in one limo, and Erica and Lisa Vanderpump, who are in another limo. Erica and Lisa Vanderpump are talking about Kyle, and Kyle and Dorit are still talking about Lisa Vanderpump. So I'm thinking, oh, this is all gonna be so much fun when they get there. Also, we see Teddy like making things nice at the beach house and getting her stemless wine glasses ready and she's making the bed and fluffing up pillows. One of her little throw pillows says beach. Really, Teddy? For your beach house? Isn't that a little on the nose? It reminds me of those like signs that say lake house that people put in their lake house. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It's just me. Never mind. <laughs> And I don't think anybody has brought a dish for this potluck dinner. Vanderpump brought a cake, but I don't think anybody else brought anything. While they're in the car, Rinna FaceTimes Erica, and Erica is in the car with Vanderpump. And Erica kind of fills Rinna in on how there's been some ruffled feathers between Kyle and Vanderpump and and she tells her that Dorit called Teddy a psycho and Rin is now kind of sorry that she's going to be missing all this. So Vanderpump and Erica arrive first and they're gracious. You know Vanderpump says I don't know why she was uh, nervous about having us come here. It's a beach house. What's not to like about a beach house? And then she kind of takes them outside in the back, which is, which is just right there at the shore. And it is beautiful. It's so pretty. And she's like, there, you know, I've got chairs set up and, and like, you know, we can have a little bonfire there. And um, yeah, I've got cornhole set up. <laughs> she's got cornhole game set up. I feel like I would pay good money just to see Lisa Vanderpump play cornhole. I can't even, I can't even like picture it in my head. What would that look like? Then Dorit and Kyle arrive and I stand corrected because Dorit brought enough food for everybody. Now, I'm not saying she made it herself, but still, I'm thinking she's trying to make up to Teddy a little bit. Maybe, because the two of them are actually, they're joking about the glasses and they're hugging and they're fine. They, at least they seem fine. What's awkward is Kyle and Lisa Vanderpump. They're acting weird toward each other and they waste no time getting into everything. At least Vanderpump doesn't because right away she wants to talk about it. Lisa won't admit that she was upset that Kyle and Dorit weren't giving her all the attention. She said, you know, I just had something really big and important to talk about and you know, I wanted to talk about it for two minutes, but it was like you guys couldn't care less and then we immediately moved on to something that was stupid with the rehashing of Glassgate. At one point, Kyle asks Lisa, if Dorit were the one who was crying, would you have gotten up and walked out of the restaurant? Because that's another kind of sticking point for Kyle. She was sitting there crying and that's when Lisa got up and left. So she asked her, if it were Dorit who was crying, would you have gotten up and left? And Lisa says, um, I don't know. I don't know. That's your answer. That's really your answer. <laughs> if I were Kyle, I would have been really upset. How do you not say anything other than yes, I would have done it for her too. I don't know. Then Vanderpump doesn't want to talk about it anymore. So a little while later, Camille shows up and Teddy and Kyle are, are sitting on the beach watching a sunset. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. There's like a perfect view of the sunset there too. 
and Camille comes out and she's talking about, oh, how great it is. Now everybody else comes out. They're, all the ladies are sitting around in these Adirondack chairs and, and Vanderpump is sitting right next to Kyle. And Camille's kind of across from them and she's like, oh, I, have to, I just wanna take a picture of with the ocean behind you guys. And the two of them are like <laughs> stone face because they're not thrilled with each other. And I don't know how Camille doesn't see this. She's like, oh, it's a beautiful picture. Um, Camille, look at the picture. Look at the faces of the people you just took a picture of. Anyway, finally she like catches on or somebody says something to her and she's like, oh, what's wrong? And they get into it again a little bit. And then finally Vanderpump apologizes for her part in it. And that was really all Kyle needed because then Kyle apologized for her part and it was, they're all good again, I guess. I mean, they made up. And that's where this episode ended. But there is drama a brewing for next week. And I'm sorry to say that I think it involves Erica having her period. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to Jill Informed if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And please don't forget to leave a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. I will see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Bye-bye.